Hello folks, welcome back to Trend Tap. In a span of less than 50 years, the United Arab Emirates has transformed itself from being a small rentier state ruled by the United Kingdom into a modern society running a highly diversified economy and a key regional power with a vast network of global friends and partners. As the country prepares to celebrate its 50th year of independence on December 2nd of 2021, the once disunited and marginal state is now recognized as a rising middle power and the second biggest Arab economy. Political analysts call a middle power a state with sufficient ability to shape regional and global effects. This is certainly true in the UAE's case. The nation has a formidable military which is strong enough to give the Gulf country the moniker the Sparta of the Arab world. According to Bloomberg, the UAE, which now manufactures and exports its own arms, has confirmed it's the first sale of air defense missiles to German security contractor Rheinmetall AG. Yet lately, some observers of Arab Gulf affairs have noticed that the UAE may be reassessing its active regional role, scaling down its foreign military footprint, withdrawing its forces from Yemen, halting aid to the Libyan National Army, and dismantling its air and naval base in Asab, Eritrea. These same observers assume that Emiratis have come to the conclusion that the era of the UAE's rise as an influential player in regional power politics is coming to an end. However, it is important not to be too hasty to eulogize the UAE's role in the world, especially in the Middle East's two main hotspots, Libya and Yemen. In Yemen, the UAE remains a major political power both in the north and the south of that Arabian Peninsula nation. Specifically, the UAE is expecting to go from power projection to power protection, from direct regional involvement to an over-the-horizon leadership role with more emphasis on soft power rather than hard power in a post-COVID-19 world. The COVID-19 Impact the COVID-19 pandemic has been a decisive moment for the UAE on all levels, including its foreign policy priorities. The pandemic has set in motion a grand rethinking of the UAE's domestic, regional, and global agenda with an urgent emphasis on domestic needs. The country is sensitive to being associated with conflicts, especially in places like Yemen, which the United Nations has called the world's largest humanitarian crisis. According to Yusuf al Otaiba, the UAE's ambassador to the United States, the UAE will become increasingly focused on its economic reforms over the next year, with the economy playing an important role in its foreign policy and relations. However, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has led the UAE to tactically make short-term changes in its foreign and domestic public policies. The long-term strategic thinking of the UAE remains intact as Emirati leaders are not abandoning the decisive and proactive foreign policy of the past decade. The UAE's momentum both domestically and regionally is noticeably moving forward. The country is determined to stay engaged regionally, showcase its soft power credentials, and upgrade its hard power. As evidenced by the country's weapons purchase of $23 billion from the United States. No scaling down, going global instead. The F-35 combat aircraft deal is meant to protect and supplement the Gulf nation's soft power projections in the post-COVID-19 era, which will feature vaccine diplomacy and more generous medical investment. By March of 2021, the country had provided 1,814 tons of medical aid to 129 countries around the world making it one of the top providers of COVID-19 aid. In addition to these soft power approaches, this new era is certain to emphasize financial investments, a space program, a pivot to Asia, and connections with new global powers such as China and regional partners such as Israel. As the UAE's former Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and current diplomatic advisor to the President, Anwar Gargash said, we want to be the global player, we want to break the barriers, and we need to take some strategic risks to break these barriers. As such, going from a local centric state to the regional power and now to a global player has been the UAE's trajectory over the past 50 years. Naturally, this success raises the question of what dynamo drives the UAE momentum and how substantial and sustainable it will be in the Arab Gulf. What challenges and strategic risks will the UAE face as it prepares for the next 50 years? Here are four drivers of the rise of the UAE as the Middle East powerhouse. Confidence, Concern, Corporation, and Crown Prince. They are the four C's of UAE momentum.
the confidence factor. The UAE's regional engagements and global ambitions are primarily driven by a deep sense of national confidence, which has been the hallmark of the 21st century UAE. The leaders, government officials, ordinary citizens, as well as the expats of the country have never been as confident as they are now about the UAE's resources, capabilities, and potential for long-term success. This national confidence is the culmination of tangible successes over the course of its 50-year history. The new UAE is a modern, cosmopolitan, and global society sustained by an economy which has gone from peripheral $37 billion of GDP in 1985 to $450 billion in 2021. Politically, the UAE has established itself among the 34 middle powers of the world. The country ranks 22 in US's news of 2021's best countries ranking. This year, the UAE is considered the first in the Middle East region and 17th worldwide in the Global Soft Power Index 2021. It is also regularly listed among the top best performers in 100 vital indicators of the US news. The Role of the Crown Prince much of the recent growth of the UAE has been the work of the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, and his young and capable foreign policy and security team. David Kirkpatrick of the New York Times describes the 60-year-old Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and de facto ruler of the United Arab Emirates as arguably the most powerful leader in the Arab world. He is among the most influential foreign voices in Washington. Crown Prince MBZ is solely behind the recent energy foreign policy coming from Abu Dhabi and is the real force behind the UAE's regional and global prominence. He has built the UAE as a leading regional military power. Moreover, he has expanded the UAE network of friends, partners, and allies. For nearly two decades, MBZ has developed the UAE's forces in places such as Kosovo, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Somalia, Lebanon, Bahrain, Yemen, and Libya. Consequently, the Crown Prince will be remembered for his lasting contribution not just to making the UAE a modern middle power, but also a prosperous and stable fortress. Challenges Facing the UAE While the future looks bright for the UAE, the nation does have its share of challenges. While it has not yet reached the point of overusing its considerable financial, political, military, and diplomatic resources, excessive overreach is a growing concern. Historically, one of the reasons why great powers fail and fall is because they overstretch their capacities. However, the country might be shouldering too many regional responsibilities. For example, confronting Iran's destabilizing role in the region opposing Turkey's aggressive regional expansionism and containing the Muslim Brotherhood's influence after the Arab Spring were among the many responsibilities the UAE took upon itself in the past 10 years. Thankfully, the leadership in Abu Dhabi appears to realize they need not to overstretch at itself and de-escalate regional tensions. The leaders in Abu Dhabi understand they should not overreach, as evidenced by recent events, namely by the end of Qatar boycott, a developing dialogue with Iran. Overconfidence can also be a problem for leaders of any country. Certainly, research shows that people tend to listen to and trust those who project confidence and sound in control of things. Confidence, then, is a cornerstone of leadership and it is good for nations as well as leaders to be confident, but not too confident. The closest the UAE ever came to this sort of hubris was during the Yemeni civil war. Luckily, leaders in Abu Dhabi were smart enough to start to draw down Emirati troops in Yemen beginning in July of 2019. Emirati leaders also pulled away from the abyss with Iran when, in July of 2019, following tanker attacks in the Strait of Hormuz, the UAE sent a delegation from its Coast Guard to Tehran to hold maritime security talks with Iranian officials, emphasizing diplomacy over confrontation. Finally, some of the time the UAE can over-rely on its global partners and friends, it goes without saying that building allies and strategic partners is part and parcel of international relations and the more allies a nation has, oftentimes the more power and influence a country can display on the world stage. Despite all the risks, the ambitious drive forward will continue both domestically and regionally. The country is full of confidence and optimistic about its present and future. It acknowledges its humble beginnings in 1971 and is aware of where it is heading. 
Emiratis know what they want their nation to become. In 2024, they want to land on the moon and by 2030, the Emiratis want the UAE to make it to the top 10 best country list. They also have a clear vision for where they want their country to be in 2071. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.